Hey, good Tuesday morning. Michael Clark with BAM Weather with your latest long-range forecast analysis. It is just a little after 10 a.m. Eastern time today. We're going to talk about the severe weather risks, the ramp up and the pattern, and some problem spots for the growing season that we see possibly surfacing here as uh, we've been able to kind of watch May evolve a little bit, watch the pattern drivers and all the things. Make sure to share this uh, with a friend. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for the latest updates. And a reminder, tomorrow at 11 a.m. live is our summer webinar. It's free to attend. You go to bamwx.com slash webinar and sign up. If you can't make it, uh, we will send you a recording. There'll be a live Q&A at the end. We're excited about that. So share that. Uh, get in there. Get ready. And we're going to kind of dive into some of the reasoning behind, let's say, for example, the map I'm showing you right now. Kind of the premise of the start of my video. Highest risk for lower than normal yields to the crops, corn, and really probably soybeans here as we kind of go through the growing season based on just what we're noticing in the pattern, all right, um, and what we think the long-term trends are. I want to show you a couple things. This is a look at the aridity index to start the year really since February through May 13th, so, um, you know, about a 90-day look there. Uh, and you can see from 2022, 23, and 24, this is the aridity index. And this is basically the, the, the standard deviated high temperature departure minus the standard deviated precipitation departure. Um, all right. And what that is telling us is that it gives us an idea of where things are in good shape and where they could be in poor shape based on just, you know, the, the, the health of the, um, the, the plant, the crop, the, the greenery in general, if you will, the, the ability to, to grow things and make them nice and, and uh, you know, all the things. This, this to the right is where the yields, the departure from normal yields have come out in those years. And it's always interesting how well they line up, okay? Not perfect by any means, but they can help us point out the garden spots and the problem spots. And you can see just how well overall they've done in the last three years and how well they generally do overall. And I've kind of highlighted that for you so you can see what I'm talking about, okay, with those yield departures. Check out 1988. I mean, again, it's it, fair, it does fairly well. Uh, in, in, in early season indications of the aridity index typically hint at where we are going to be dealing with issues of some sort going forward. Now, I'll say we've had a lot of questions about 2012. We get this all the time because that's everybody's worst nightmare essentially is what it, what happened in the summer of 2012 and to the crops and all that. And here's the thing. It's not 2012 right now. I'm going to prove that to you. Um, it's not ever going to be 2012 again, by the way. Uh, I just, I believe that. But this is bottom left. That was 2012. Okay. And you can see the differences right now. Now, is right now really dry and, and indicative of problems? Yes, it is. Right now, you know, I'm 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 worried generally um, about this area, and this may be too big, you name it. But um, 2012 was just like whoa. I mean, this was silly. How bad it was. It's not that. All right. And so this was the outcome departure 2012 yields. And so th this, what we have here is where we think it's not going to be as similar, but there could be similarities here to the, to the potential uh, reduction in the yield departure, the yields in terms of the, the outcome. Um, could be better here versus 2012, um, but we could have big problems here. And so that's what I kind of want to point your attention to really is, you know, this this particular setup right now, this would be, and even if we had to to get a little bit more, I guess hyper local, if you if we had to, this would be the area of concern, primarily, and it you know for problems, especially in how the the how well the crop can do this year, based on just simply where we're starting. Okay, so that's some of the thought process right now. And there's a lot of talk about the yield, a lot of talk about what it needs to be and what, you know, the carryouts and all that stuff. From a weather perspective, the aridity index is a great indicator, lead indicator of what could happen as we go forward um, with 
the yields. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. Let's take a look at the, the current radar situation here this morning. Okay, rain out to the east, heavy rain falling out there across the eastern uh, seaboard. Going to be more rain here across the Ohio Valley today. Um, and, and, and looking at rainfall just the last seven days here from the Clarity Platform, the south and the east has needed the moisture. We talked about it last week. They were going to get the moisture. And where you haven't gotten the moisture, obviously, is um, in the central and northern U.S. Uh, we see where there's been the lack of rainfall um, in the you know, last seven days. There hasn't been much of, if any, rain. Um, this area here really, really needed the break. They don't need rain, I promise you. They just haven't had much in the last seven days. Um, but we can see where the precip is needed. Now, if you want to cut this in half, maybe a little bit more, you're, you're going to get some precip in here. We're going to question it in here for the time being, which is something we need to continue to keep an eye on. We look at the future 24-hour rainfall forecast, updates every hour in Clarity, which, by the way, you can go to BAMWX.com and get this, this platform. Um, but this is the 24-hour forecast. goes out. It's a 24-hour look, and you can interrogate the map. We've got isolated scattered rain and storms that are going to develop across Indiana and Ohio the next 24 hours that could bring some locally heavy rain amounts. Okay, we'll zoom it back out here and go and just look at the, the three-day total for rainfall. All right, <clears throat> and again, you can see where rain is going to start to add up across the Dakotas and portions of Manitoba there and Winnipeg, Winkler there in the southern portion of the Canadian prairies. Large area of rain may be possible there. Um, looking forward here over the next three days. So something to keep in mind. Now, um, with that in mind, we are going to be looking at the potential for some stronger storms. And I've kind of I've kind of highlighted this. There's the, the 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 first day one period, which we've already covered. We'll go into day two, which is going to be Tuesday night to Wednesday night. And you can see more of the scattered activity up here across Indiana, Illinois, or uh, Indiana, Illinois, yes, Ohio, and Michigan scattered about in nature. And then we'll start to see the threat increase for rain and storm activity across the southern Canada and into the uh, Dakotas. And you can see that rainfall real, uh, forecast really increase Wednesday night into Thursday night. That's where heavy rain breaks out. And some of these storms, Wednesday night and Thursday, could be on the strong side. There's a slight risk of severe weather in that particular location. And some of those storms locally could be uh, heavy. Now that, that shifts east. A lot of heavy rain in the northern plains there. But again, you can see... As that shifts east, so does the, the severe outlook. This has potential here to be a rather widespread uh, risk for severe weather. There could be a, a decent outbreak of severe weather here if the cap can break. What's the, what that means is essentially in this region, the instability is extraordinarily high, which normally means it leads to a strong cap in place where it, it can limit or hinder the development of convection or thunderstorms. If convective temperatures are reached, it gets warm enough, we can bust through that and see an outbreak of severe weather. But there's also high-end bust potential here, which means this may not materialize. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And you can see the convection models are not super excited for that day three risk here. I want to show you the uh, just the total rainfall from the uh, morning RRFS. And you can see that uh, it's not very excited about, actually, let's go to a simulated radar product. Um, Thursday, it's not super excited in the slight risk area whatsoever, except for the northern half of it. See the northern piece firing up some thunderstorms there Thursday night into Friday? It's not super excited about places south of that. So something to keep in mind. we got to watch and see. There's, a, there's ample levels of instability. Um, if things can fire, you can see just how charged it is. That's impressive. You're in Indiana in May to have almost 4,000 joules of cape. If anything can fire in that environment, gosh, look down there, over 5,000, it could get nasty. Uh, we got to see how that pans out um, for that risk on day three. Okay, something else to keep in mind here, day three, excessive rain in the northern plains, Minnesota, marginal risk for heavy rains, excessive rainfall there. Day four, that does shift Along the southern portion of the Ohio River Valley, Kentucky, Tennessee, as the front moves through, there will be some rain there. And day five, it kind of continues. Texas, Oklahoma, um, uh, Arkansas, portions of Tennessee, Missouri, there in the southern half of that. 
Okay, that's out through day five. Now, we look at the seven-day rainfall totals from the evening European model. And again, it's questionable. We, we, we're questioning some of this and with the simple fact of can the rain really materialize in the front uh, as it moves through? The, the European is skeptical. You look at the GFS and it's heavier. You can see that the Weather Prediction Center has sided with the American model data in that regard. Um, 6Z run heavier, the latest run, than that of the European model. Okay, so again, we've got some questions. There's some risk for some heavy rainfall here in the next seven days. Um, we've got some questions as to can it materialize. We go all the way out, all the way out. Next 15 days, it's not an inactive look. You look at the European, it is definitely not an inactive look. In fact, actually, you know what? There's the 6Z. Um, a, a little bit a little bit more impressive there with the rain. Not, not as bad there. Um, and you can see what it tries to do with the uh, additional moisture as the front passes. Not as bad. Goes out to 144 hours there. But then let's go back and look at the 0Z all the way out. The, the, the European was, was soaked. Um, mind you, in our research for these years that present drier problems, warmer problems. A lot of that doesn't really show up until very late May into June. Uh, even in 2012, it was still raining in May. Keep that in mind. There were some big rain events in May. It just quickly happened. It was different in 88. It was earlier, more prolonged, more more expected. Um, so something to keep in mind, that evening European is soaked across the central U.S. There's really, really no doubt about it. Question is, can it be right? That's 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 the million dollar question there. Obviously, um, if we go to the AI version of the model, which I meant to pull that up, there's the 15 day precip from normal forecast using AI. So you can see it's not as excited as what I just showed you. Okay, something to keep in mind. Week one on the left, a little bit drier in the central portion of the country from normal, wet in the Dakotas. Very, very warm east. Week two, front slides through. That front's coming here later this week, by the way. It's bringing the severe weather. Cooler and a wetter pattern evolves there by the European Ensemble in week two, which brings needed rains and cooler temperatures. Not very many people are going to complain about that as long as you got planted. Okay, so just something to keep in mind there. A cooler, wetter week. The current week three to four outlook indicates cooler conditions can maintain east the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, Great Lakes, the 27th through the 9th. Uh, warmer conditions prevailing central U.S., south Texas, and much of Texas there in the desert southwest. Um, so not super warm. In fact, cooler risks to the east in week three and four. Warmer to much above normal temperatures anticipated here in the central U.S. for the 27th of May through the 9th of June. And then the, temp the, the precipitation forecast again, I think it can be wetter east, drier in the central and southwestern plains in the southwestern U.S. there, as indicated here on our latest precip forecast. Now, I will tell you just real quickly, the June outlook temperature-wise overall in, in pretty good agreement with it. No major uh, disagreements for now. We will update June later today um, and have a, a fresh updated June forecast tomorrow in our webinar, which don't forget to sign up at. And the precip forecast, this is again where the problems may start to arise, but we just got done talking at the, the start of this video, and there is a potential, I think, tentatively, that there can be wetter risks in this general area. So we may possibly trend this forecast wetter somewhere in here and keep this part out to the west um, in the central plains drier based on things that we're seeing. So we'll continue to kind of monitor that and keep you posted. But that's the latest for now. Again, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, share it with a friend, share it on your socials, post it to X, post it to Facebook, forums, friends, family, whatever. Um, if, if, the, uh, if the video brought you any value today and you enjoyed it, we ask that you share it for us. So have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow live 11 a.m. at our webinar.